Yo, what's good, YouTube family? Thank y'all for tuning back into another video. Make sure that y'all like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you watch through the whole thing too if you want to really help because Damn, this puts me more in YouTube's algorithm and helps me to continue to grow and to reach more people while using the gifts and abilities God has given me to glorify Him in His name, to spread the gospel, and to make Him in His name known. Just like any other haircut, before we pick up any clipper or trimmer, we want to prep the hair. So since he has a mini fro or a small little fro, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick it out. Making sure that I do it everywhere. You want everything picked out. I'm going to do the same thing to his beard while I have the pick in my hand just to save more time and be more efficient with my time as a barber. Y'all can see he clearly has product in his hair. So after I picked it out, I went and I washed it. For the ball lines, for the taper, I'll just put it in straight across in the back. Um, Sometimes I might do an arch shape, but for the most part, for the back taper, I just like a nice, clean, just straight across taper. And make sure that you, when you put your ball lines in, you put them in nice, clean, neat, and even. The ball line is like the foundation of the haircut, and it's going to play a big factor in determining how clean and even of a haircut you can give. So we're doing a low taper. So I'm going to bottom out right around the top of his ear. I like personally to flip my trimmer just to get a nice, clean line for the beard too and then clear the area out do the same thing on the other side making sure that they match up to start my fading process i have my blade open on my andis masters and i'm going up about three quarters of an inch to first establish my guideline i'm gonna flick out after i have my guideline established i'm gonna lay my blade flat and go to the top of the guideline now i have my lever halfway closed and i'm going halfway up the guideline then I'm going to close my lever a little bit more, tap the bottom line, soften it up, and then I'm going to close it all the way and tap the bottom line, take it out completely. I believe personally that before you put a guard on or before you start doing like the fade with the comb, however you're fading, I believe that the, from the lever open to close is the most important part of the fade because it's like the foundation of the fade and going to play a big factor in determining how clean and even of a fade that you can get. So now with the comb, y'all, um... Using this side of the comb, the big side of the comb is like using a one and a half guard. And usually I'll start uh, with that side of the comb with my lever open. And uh, then I just work my way to the lever closed. And then if I need to, I flip it to the small side of the comb, which is like using a half guard or a zero guard. And make sure that when you're doing any type of fade, whether you're using a comb or uh, whether you're brushing, whatever, however you're doing the fade, if you're using guards, it don't matter. Make sure that you always comb the hair or brush the hair back down in the way that it's supposed to lay. And um, yeah, for the most part, y'all, just it's kind of hard to explain clipper over comb any more than I did. So just pay attention to my lever and just what I'm doing. Now I'm doing some detail work. By detail work, I mean lever play. So open and closing my lever on my blade when need be in corner work using the last couple of teeth of my blade or the corner of my blade to pinpoint dark spots, bring them to the light and make the fade as smooth as possible. My message for today, I'm gonna read from a book called One Minute with the Men of the Bible, a devotional by Jim George. This one's about David, a man who fought after God's own heart. God gave the testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will, Acts 13:22. David was among the greatest heroes of the Old Testament. He led the tiny and insignificant country of Israel to the heights of power and influence. He also established Jerusalem as the capital of the nation of Israel and brought the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, establishing the city as the center of worship of the one true God. David was a great leader and his obedience to God was the key to his success. With all that we learned about the life of David in 1st and 2nd Samuel, and especially his adultery with Bathsheba and the murder of Bathsheba's husband, Uriah. It is sometimes difficult to understand how God could say, David was a man after my own heart who would do all my will. How is this possible? David was far from perfect, but he still loved God. When confronted with his sin, David repented, thanked God for his forgiveness, and moved on in service to God. David's life should be a tremendous encouragement to you. Like David, you are not perfect. Just ask those closest to you. But like David, you can be a man who loves and pursues God. You grow spiritually when your greatest desire, your daily prayer, and your constant focus is to become God's kind of man. That is what it means to be a man after God's own heart. This man. Reads and reflects on God's word. Psalms 119, 9-11. Seeks to always obey God's word. To be a man who 
will do all his will. Acts 13, 22. Confesses his sin quickly. 1 John 1, 9. And thanks God for his amazing forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1, 7. Y'all yeah, really love this book. Hopefully that message encouraged you, y'all. I, I, I encourage y'all to go get this book because, I mean, it's been great since I got out of it. So, yeah, it's going to teach you a lot, especially about stories of the Bible. That's really what I got it for. I wanted to learn more about stories. Um, Right now, to get into the faith, I have the zero guard on, and I'm just doing detail work. Like I said previously, by detail work, I mean lever play, open and close my lever my blade when need be. And corner work using the last couple teeth of my blade or the corner of my blade to pinpoint dark spots, bring them to the light, and make the fade as smooth as possible. Basically, that's what I'm doing right here. Just cleaning up with my endless masters and my comb. Let me know how y'all feel about the angles, though. Did y'all like that? I know that the angle was kind of blurry, uh, but did you like the angle though? Cause I'm just trying to man. I'm just trying to make the best content I can. It's just like when it's just you and a monopod the shop it's kind of a little difficult um yeah i'm gonna continue to say this every time till i get this academy posted hopefully by the time i i upload this video i have the academy ready and it's already launched but uh yeah make sure that y'all get an academy when i get it i'm telling y'all i'm giving y'all so much game in the academy all right y'all so right now for this front lineup this is the first time i cut this client by the way um and y'all are gonna be shocked when i tell you something but we'll get into that when we get to that point right right now i'm just cutting it i'm preparing doing a lineup preparation in the back i must have seen something i needed to fade out before i did the lineup you know i cut his hair down first now i'm throwing some uh curl enhancement in um just some mousse for real just some mousse now i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna take my miss jewel curl sponge and I'm just whip his hair up, you know what I'm saying? Get that nice curly top look, that nice sponge look. And I actually like how these sponges sponge and they're just so much cleaner. Alright, y'all. So to get into the air lineup though, I like to uh do my slant. And after I do my slant, go ahead and clear the area. I just like to clear the area, it gives me better visualization. And then once I get to the top of the ear or around the top of the ear. I'm going to convert to using the last couple of teeth of my blade or the corner of my blade to finish making an R shape around the ear. Make sure that you solidify all your lineups. By solidifying your lineup, I mean make sure that you put the lineup in, then comb any overhanging hairs over the lineup, then cut them at the line you already established. Don't dig into it, don't push it back. Just cut it the line you already have established. And uh, yeah, it'll be good for you, you know what I'm saying? Just keep it, keep it natural it natural as possible natural and crispy as possible and solidify your lineup and that's going to set you apart as a barber as far as the cutting aspect is involved it's a lot bigger than that but as far as the cutting aspect of all is of all is involved then that's definitely going to help uh it's going to set you apart because it's going to make your cuts last longer than a regular barber because a lot of barbers just overlook that for whatever reason with the front he didn't want to cut down like a lot i would have probably used the one and a half to cut the front out but you know the client's always right so i'm just gonna work with this two guard and uh you know do what i gotta do i like to start in the middle and work my way to the side once the front meets the side i like to tap in a vertical bar So you can see I'm tapping in the vertical bar, but you can't see, but you can see. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can see vertical bar tapped in smooth. I didn't do a C cup first because I just want to line both of the sides up just to see what C cup, uh, what side of his vertical bar, which one goes down farther or not. So you can see I tapped in the other side and then I brushed the hair and then I tapped it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do this side first. I like to start at the bottom of the vertical bar and just put a little line in then i go to the bottom of the c cup and i work my way to the top of it and meet them in the middle and you know i like to keep this a uh, pretty natural look too because if you this is what you got to understand the more natural that you can keep the hairline the longer it's gonna last and especially if you can 
make it natural and crispy at the same time, which you can, it's like, if you do that, the client is going to learn, like, let them go somewhere else and I promise you somebody if somebody if somebody gonna go push them back and then they gonna think about you and be like man they're a great barber I gotta go to him because everybody else is doing this pushing me back stuff all right y'all so this is what I gotta tell you he didn't let me line the top of his beard so and then he didn't want any enhancements I, I honestly like I'm cool with no enhancements a lot of the times but for this cut I really wanted to like when I seen him I was like dang this is gonna be a great YouTube video because he already got a good lineup he already got a good beard and i'm gonna enhance it the beard's gonna pop so hard but he didn't want uh he didn't even want me to line his beard up i ended up like barely barely tapping it because he wanted it higher i think somebody pushed it down before and then he ended up pushing it out himself but yeah we didn't get to do we didn't line the top of the beard uh just his mustache and you know below the beard and the the back of the beard but this is the cut y'all let me know what y'all think about this cut in the comment section i think it still turned out fire i'm if he come back i'm gonna have to run it back probably do another video on him but uh if you came to my channel because you like watching barber videos i hope you enjoyed this video and it satisfied you if you came to learn something hope you take something from my game and apply it to yours and advance in your career and your craft and your life came for the message i hope it reached you and touched your heart your soul your mind and your body i think this cut still turned out fire though taper butter lineup extra crispy naturally too this is a natural one for y'all and uh thank y'all for tuning to the late show hope to see you back on the next video and god bless